Hi, it's Mark Bosser, producer of the Pollock Automotive Podcast, and we're here with Mr. Bernie Pollock, Pollock Automotive in Vancouver, BC, Canada. And we're talking cars. How are you doing this morning, Bernie? Doing very well. So we're going to talk about the reliability of a storied franchise in the automotive world, Land Rover and Range Rovers. How reliable are Land Rovers and Range Rovers? Yeah, well, let's break it down because uh, that's a pretty big line of cars. Let's break it down into uh, a lot of uh, years. Yeah, yeah. Well, we'll we'll cover we'll cover sort of early two thousand up to modern, and of course, modern being you know like brand new. Um, however, we don't really have a lot to say about brand new because they're new and uh, they're generally new. New cars are reliable, and anything that needs to be fixed will be done uh, at the dealership level. However, we can do and we can and we do. Uh, maintenance service on on brand new vehicles. It's just that anything that needs to be fixed will be sent back. And generally, it takes a while for a vehicle to age into you know seeing what reliability issues are. Three to five years, I think, and then after that, other issues tend to crop up. And we're going to be talking, uh, as I said, the, the line of Land Rover and Range Rover is kind of large. I mean, with the Range Rover, we're we're going to stick with the full size and the Sport, and with the Land Rover, it's LR3 and LR4 models. Um, the LR2s and uh, Range Rover Evokes, we'll discuss those on another another time. All right, so uh, we've kind of narrowed it down. Let's start with the engine. What kind of issues do you see with Land Rover, Range Rover engines? Yeah, so uh, so as far as engines, uh, first of all, you'll, you'll find either a V6 or a V8, uh, mostly V8. So V6s are not super common, but they are available. And uh, some of the newer Range Rovers also have a a supercharged uh, V6 as well, which is kind of a nice option because they do tend to be a real uh, fuel consuming vehicle, um, heavy, powerful. And then the engines will either be uh, naturally aspirated or supercharged, one, one of the two. So as far as reliability, I mean, with the supercharged, we see a lot of, uh, I'll just talk about problems. Uh, supercharger nose cone failures. There's a, there's a little uh, coupler in the in the supercharger um, nose cone that tends to wear out prematurely so that's a that's a definite reliability issue and by the time you hit 100,000 kilometers 60,000 miles for if you're in, in the US um, you know th that part will tend to fail and need to be replaced um, there's also uh, the other issues uh, and again we see this between like uh, 2013 sorry 2010 and 2013 models timing chains seem to wear out mostly on the supercharged models but they will even uh, yeah, so, and, and, and on the naturally aspirated ones as well. Um, for, for a few of those model years, they didn't build the timing chain tensioners substantial enough with a, there's a few uh, pieces, and we have, we have a video on, a podcast on that you can look at. But uh, you, you generally, if you own one of these vehicles long enough, you'll, you'll most likely have to replace the timing chains and tensioners on, on that vehicle. So that, those are kind of the two major issues you'll see. Of course, if you don't have a supercharged model, you won't do the nose cone. Um, the other issues we do see on, on some other models are, are cooling system failures, hoses, couplers, small coolant leaks that tend to develop into larger coolant leaks. So those are things to keep an eye on as well. And of course, if you have your car regularly maintained, you'll be able to pick those things up and fix them and service them. But coolant leaks are probably the bigger issue. Um, the good news is, um, is oil leaks are, are something we don't see a lot of on these engines. So that used to be something that would happen a lot more in, in earlier generations, oil leaks, head gasket problems, and that doesn't seem to be happening in these, this generation we're talking about. So that's, that's a positive thing. How about the transmission and drivetrain? How are they for reliability? Really reliable. I mean, it's, uh, I can't really even think of last time we ever did it. We did a transmission or, uh, or a um, you know, differential repair uh, on these models, axle shafts. Every, everything in that department is really well built and really robust. Uh, you know, the transfer cases are good. There's a lot of electronic controls on these too, and, and they all tend to work really, they all tend to be pretty reliable. So um, that's a good thing. And, and you know, these vehicles, even though most people, at least around these parts, don't take them off road, we do have a few customers who actually do use them uh, out in the bush and they, they tend to be very reliable and, and a good tough, good tough vehicle. So, so that part of the vehicle is, is uh, I wouldn't say it's bulletproof, but uh, you know, not something we see a lot of problems with. What about the brake system? So the brakes again, pretty reliable, but they do tend to wear out faster than you might expect, especially if you, if you look in, you know, you can see into the wheel and you look at a Range Rover's brake rotor. I mean, they're just, they're massive, huge things. Um, you think that with a, a brake rotor that size it would, in large brake pads it would dissipate the heat well and last for a long time, but they don't. Um, 
I mean, you're kind of like, you're lucky to get 50,000 kilometers out of a set of brake pads and rotors on, on these vehicles. Um, maybe a little more in an LR3 and 4, but uh, the Range Rovers, you know, they're heavy and, and they tend to go through brakes a little more frequently. And they are, they are expensive. Uh, they're not, you know, AMG Mercedes or, uh, or Aston Martin expensive, but, you know, they are, um, they are a little more money uh, than your average vehicle just because of the size of the parts. But the other components like the calipers tend to be pretty reliable. We changed the odd one on an older, higher mileage model, but uh, or something that's been in a bad, rusty climate. But uh, generally, the brakes are pretty good. They just tend to wear out and need servicing a little more frequently. So I know this next area we've definitely done podcasts about, <laughs> steering and suspension. Steering and okay. suspension. Yeah, that's, a, that's an area on these vehicles that, that definitely tends to need some work. Um, Let's just talk about the steering. I mean, the steering is pretty reliable. We, we have done the odd rack and pinion, you know, because they do tend to leak af after a certain amount of time, but not a really common repair. The tie rod ends tend to be pretty good, but the suspension end of it, there's a lot of things that can, that can go wrong and do on these vehicles. It's, so these vehicles all have air suspension. Uh, right away, that's an, an added set of issues. Uh, the suspension compressors uh, do fail uh, on, on all of them over time. So the air suspension compressor will go bad. Uh, the, uh, the air bags themselves fail after a time, although we don't do a lot of them, but they do, they do tend to fail. Uh, you know, so given long enough, you will end up replacing the, those air bags. Uh, but you know, we see 10 year old and even 15 year old models that still, that they're still intact. So they are fairly durable, but they do fail from time to time. But the big, the big thing on these is, is uh, control arm bushings. Uh, in specific, the lower control arm has a has a rear bushing that tends to fail on on very I'd say prematurely. They they tend to go pretty badly. But but they, we've done control arm full control arms on front and back on on a lot of these models because they tend to they tend to wear out over time. They're all all nice rubber bushings for a nice uh, smooth sort of ride, but they they uh, you know they're not the most robust and uh, durable. So Given time, you, you will replace uh, a lot of control arms on these vehicles to get the bushings fixed up. And how you'll know they're bad, you'll have creaky noises or there, there'll be a lot of clunks in the suspension and those tend to develop over time. So that's, that's probably the biggest issue in these that we find. What about the body and interior? You know, generally everything in that department is, is pretty good. I can't really think of any issues we, you know, I mean, we don't do body work, but I mean, you know, the fit and finish on these vehicles is all really good, high quality, the paints are good. Um, you know, interior wise, we don't see any, you know, things falling apart or busting apart. You know, the power windows tend to keep, you know, working for a long time and the door locks, there's oh, a few things we fix here and there, but there's not really any alarming concerns. I'll put it that way. And how about the electrical system? Again, electrical system is pretty reliable with, with the amount of uh, complexity on this vehicle that they actually tend to be pretty good when we do change the odd alternator. I mean, it's important to keep a good battery in these type of vehicles. Um, any, any more, any modern vehicle, especially something that runs the amount of electronics these do, having a good, strong battery is an important thing to, uh, to keep in. And I mean, generally batteries last five years. It's about the case with these vehicles too, you, you know, but every five years you should change your battery. Um, but it, we test them uh, on servicing and they don't, nothing fails prematurely, but electrically speaking, you know, these cars are pretty good. And I know uh, in the past, Land Rovers, Jaguars had a bad reputation, the Lucas wiring systems, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of jokes. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> yes. Yeah. There was a lot of problems, but that's long, ancient history. It's like, we're talking about different kind of car. Um, you know, I, as much as I, you know, do, do bash Fords now and then, I mean, probably the best thing that ever happened to Land Rover and Jaguar was that uh, Ford bought them out because they actually made them into pretty reliable cars. So, so there, there's our compliment to Ford. So there you go. If you're looking for service in Vancouver, BC, Canada for your Jaguar, the guys to see are Pollock Automotive. You can reach them at 604-327-7112 to book your appointment. You have to call and book ahead. They're busy. Check out the website, pollockautomotive.com. Hundreds of articles and videos on there or on our YouTube channel, Pollock Auto Repair. All makes, models, types of repairs, maintenance issues, tips, etc. <laughs> many years now of doing this. And as well, of course, we really appreciate you watching the podcast and listening and thanks, Bernie. Thanks, Mark. Thanks for watching. <laughs>